All right, we are live. What is up, brother? What's up, my man? What is up? Is it life is good minus what's going on around me? But <laughs> Dude, <laughs> my mind heart's still good, brother. I, it's good to see you. Likewise, man. I tell you what, you guys, you're <clears throat> excuse me, you're really it's shocking what what's going on up there. Um, before we jump into that, though, um, really quick, I just want to introduce you. So, Sean Zimmer, um, also known as the Viking on Instagram, uh, started following you a while back, man, and um, really just a big fan of what you stand for, what what you're representing now, especially in the context of everything that is going on up there, which as an American, it's kind of crazy to me. I was talking about this actually on my Instagram live earlier. How, like you always think of Canadians as these like nice, easygoing people and stuff. And it's like, it's full on crackdown up there, brother. What, uh, what's going on? And, you know, tell first off, who are you? What are you all about? And then what the hell is going on up there? Yeah, well, there's a lot going on up here, that's for sure. And who I am is what you can see. I'm a fucking man. I'm a <laughs> dad. Yeah. I stand up for what I believe in and what values are, what's right. And I gotta, I gotta say the same thing, man. I appreciate what you're all about. You know, I think we connect. We both got daughters, right? We stand for freedom. We stand for being a presence of masculinity, protectors and providers. Um, that really gives you me in a nutshell. Yeah, um, that's all that really matters, honestly. Yeah, I do life coaching. I do that, but. Right now, the world today, all that matters, I'm a protector and provider. I have a voice and I'm sharing it and I'm sharing more than that, you know, and I want to give a message right now to everybody, especially Canadians. I'm a man with connections. I'm a man with resources. I'm a man with strength. I'm a man with power. I'm a man who doesn't have fear from what is being put onto me. Use me. Come and use me. I want to just say that right now because Canadians need to stand up right now. We'll get into what's going on with that, but yeah, all you Canadians out there, use me. Come and hit me up. Well, let's get going because it, it's it's crazy. It's what's happening, man. So that's who I am. You know, I'm a dad, devoted father, and uh, devoted to <laughs> having the light win right now, man. Yeah, having the light win. Yeah, right on, brother. So, um, where? So, what part of Canada are you located in? And forgive me, I'm not super super familiar with with the geography up there. I know a little bit, but no worries. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm dead smack in the middle okay. in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is two hours north of the border from uh north dakota so i'm not too far from minneapolis fargo all that kind of stuff right there good old minneapolis <laughs> yeah been, been some fun stuff going on in there too man um so so you you already mentioned you're a coach you know life coach fitness coach you know you put out a lot of good motivational content for men and just people in general uh and that's really why i believe i initially started following you but you've kind of evolved in response to what's been going on up there as really a voice standing up to this tyranny that is, again, it's so shocking to me to see Canadians going through this when, you know, I live down here in the States, I'm in South Carolina. We haven't had a lockdown or a mask mandate in my state. And dude, it's been the better part of the last year, honestly. And and it's been normal life here. So when I see what you guys are going through up there, brother, it's like, I can't even believe it. So is this like, Justin Trudeau or like, why is it like this? I mean, it's not like COVID is worse up there or anything like that. What is going on? Uh, well, I think it's the, uh, the agenda across the world right now. And it just happens to be that most Canadians don't know where their fucking backbone has gone and have been pushed back to it and has allowed this to happen. You know, yeah. what you allow, you enable. And we're seeing some serious stuff happen right now. And we've been pushed around so much because of our lack of pushing back. And now we have Canadians who are in such a situation of despair, you know, so oppressed. They've been broke for almost two years now, um, are being told they can't do this, can't do that. They're scared. Now they're just like, yeah, please, government, come on, daddy, give me whatever you, whatever I got to do, I'll do it so I can get back. So now we officially have... Um, They've just announced that restaurants, establishments, venues and whatnot can open up at 25 percent capacity. And there's a long list. I'll give it to you so you can post a link with this. What they've sent to restaurants and everything, a venue on the segregation that's being introduced right now. It's not uh, um, presented. It's happening where if you're vaccinated, you can sit with friends. If you're not vaccinated, you can't sit with friends that are outside your household. If you're vaccinated, you get the bar top. You get certain seating if you're unvaccinated. You got to go outside. I think there's maybe a couple seats inside for 
people who aren't vaccinated. So segregation is here. The government has given this out to all venues, including you can't dance, including sound levels can't be superseding 80 decibels, which people don't seem to realize what's going on. They're still oppressing you, keeping you depressed, keeping you divided. It is insane. And that people are getting behind this. The majority of people are behind this. And that is one of the biggest reasons why I'm standing up. You know, when this first happened intuitively, I was like, no, this is not right. Day one, this is fuck. Something in my heart is telling me, no, my spirit speaking loudly to me about this. And of course, everything, you know, <laughs> all the tinfoil hat stuff has, has, has come to light now. It's here and people are just okay with it. We have an app that's being launched in a week or two with QR codes. So when you go to these restaurants, you'll have an app that says your medical records and that'll allow you to get different service compared to other people. You can go to sporting events now. You can not have to be put in a government facility when you travel back from Canada if you have your juice, right? It's it's absolutely insane. So these fear tactics are quite working with a lot of Canadians and they're all just bowing down, ready to give away their God-given rights and freedoms because they are scared and don't have the backbone to fight for it. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm a little bit um, worked up on the matter, especially as last night I had two police officers, I'm sure we'll get into it, try to scare me down last night for what I'm doing. So uh, don't mind, there might be a little bit of aggression today that comes out. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Look. That's what makes you who you are too. And, and, um, God, it's just, I just have so many questions because again, it's just like, is this stemming from just the desire of the government to control people just to exercise power over people just because, I mean, because it's not like your COVID numbers aren't worse up there. It's not like any, anything like that. It's literally just like what you said, like the people are taking it. So they're just going to keep making them submit, right? I mean, it's really just an exercise in power and nothing else. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, the get vaccinated, everybody, that to me is just uh, Hey, we got you to do this. We're almost there guys. Now we got to do this, right? You did that. Now we got to do this, right? It's just, it's just a trail of breadcrumbs leading you in it. And um, it's, we have these two bills right now that a lot of people aren't even speaking about bill C10 and C36. So it's, yeah. Justin Trudeau will most likely get these passed through C10 being all of our social media now will be government controlled. So what not only we're allowed to see, but we're allowed to post as well. That'll be controlled, right? So he can hide certain things from us. And then Bill C36, which has been presented, which most likely will pass, puts hate crime, speech of hate crimes on social media up for fines, offensive for fines and jail time. So if I say something that goes against a narrative of some sort at some point that is offensive to somebody, they can make a report of such anonymously. They don't have to state who they are. And I can be fined up to $70,000 for hate speech and as well put into jail. Wow. And I can definitely see that being transitioned towards just really, you know, keeping everybody in Canada in a little bubble away from what's actually going on. And we look at, you know, these communities that Justin Trudeau has been catering to, um, you know, the LGTB communities, the gay pride, all these different things that he's catered to over sensitives. And these guys all get together, you know, to go for their freedom of choice and whatnot. We have these giant parades and, and rallies and whatnot. But now when it's coming to our freedoms on what's being said, we can put on and put in our bodies demanded on such and being able to work and see our families and whatnot where the fuck are they right now right yeah. we have it, it's just such a divide right now and people are so lost and confused and fearful and i do have compassion for them but at this point in time you know i've been saying a year and a half ago kind of said it loosely i felt like there's a lot of negativity but now any canadian that's following any of the mandates any of this they're for it all and there needs to be that divide right now no support for anybody who's getting in line right a lot of people are like I've blasted a lot of people that are doing this, that are, hey, guys, we're opening up, but you got to follow these strict lines. If you're vaccinated, you do this. If you're not vaccinated, you can't do that. And I've called them out. i put them on blast. I'm, I've started a highlight reel on my social media for people who are pro-choice. And I've had these people message me, obviously offended, and say, hey, what else are we supposed to do to be able to get back to work? I'm like, oh, it's great to see that that's what you care about, being allowed to go back to work. Right. So you're going to have everybody take an experimental drug because you don't have the backbone. Nice to show your real fucking face that I assumed it was. And I try not to make assumptions, but thanks for letting me know I was right. Because you could just open back up and not put your selfish desires first so you could travel and have your money and whatnot and realize what we're laying down, the foundation for our next generations. A lot of people are just stuck on thinking the year ahead right now. You know, they're so they're 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 oppressed. They haven't been able to have their vices to travel, do this and that, escape reality, right? Other than 
the, the nonstop line of liquor and, and pot that the government's made sure is still open. Yeah. But so everybody just wants to have their freedoms, their first world amenities or whatnot. They're not thinking about our children. And that's where I'm at on this one. I'm willing to give my life down if I got to go and put whatever, 10, 20 years in, whatever it is, I, I'm, I'm seeing this through. So that's where we're at right now. We have so many Canadians that just don't have that backbone and don't realize it either, I see. I think they're just... <sighs> I'm a lost for words on that on that yeah. one at this point, man. Especially those who are calling people like myself conspiracy theorists a year and a half ago, and now you see it all. How can you not be like, wow? Yeah, and it's just crazy just to hear you say that a year and a half ago. Like it's literally been going on that long, which is just fucking mind blowing, right? Like, it, you know, once upon a time, I remember last year getting all like, like scared or not scared, but like thinking, oh my God, this is ridiculous when, when it was like April and they were saying, oh, it could extend until the end of May or June, you know, like a couple months. I was like a couple months, this is madness. And now here we are like a fucking year and a half later and it's still, you know, locked down in a lot of places. And it's just, it, the, the science doesn't support it. I mean, the, there's no reason for this. And that's what blows my mind so much about Canada is because, you know, again, a, a dude down here in the States, man, I think about Canada as very rational people, you know, very like, and, and it's just wild to see like, you know, churches getting busted up by SWAT teams and just this, it, it doesn't compute. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. And so I was, I was really interested in talking to you about all of it because, you know, I, I'm, I want to know like, where does it come from? And then what is ultimately like, where is it going? Where do you, what do you think they're trying to achieve by this? And do you think that it's just, I don't know. I don't, I, it just blows my mind so much, dude. Like, because you would think that Canada would be, I guess, freer than, than down here to, in, in some ways, but like, it's just not that at all. Like it's, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it, it's wild. It's truly it's wild. Yeah, it's not. It's not that at all. I wish it was. I wish it was, my man. But it, it definitely is not. And it's crazy to see uh, people that are still okay with this, like you said, pastors being put in prison. So you know, when this first happened, they said to give you a little history on it all. You know, we've had lockdowns, as many states have as well. They even had it to the point where they were blocking off certain things, saran wrapping. You know, making it restricted to buy certain things like books. Um, stationary supplies when we went to the stores. But of course, all the candy was still available, all the pot, all the booze. Um, now I get it. Yeah, we have, you know, additions. Um, so I understand that part. But as well, I think they probably could have put some systems in place for that, considering that we're going to be making non-essentials such as stationary supplies and books and all that blocked off. Well, they probably could have went to an extent of, okay, let's prove you have an alcohol addiction and we'll, we'll feed you your supply and let's actually get you on a program to try to remove this because we're in a fucking pandemic. Yeah. We need to focus on actual health, right? We have the numbers. And you said, well, ain't being done. It's absolutely in it. They didn't put any systems in place to protect those actually at risk. They shut down the whole fucking world, causing what we see now, right? It's it's absolutely ludicrous when they could have actually set systems in place to protect the elderly, set up, you know, sanitized systems for delivery on essentials and let everybody else go by life. And most of the elderly I know, they just want to fucking get out and live their last couple of years anyway. Um, so now you have... All of this has put in place these, this massive divide and conquer tactic that we've seen. And it's pulled people apart big time, big time, right? You're getting all these individuals going at each other. And that's what's actually the biggest thing that's happened is a lot of people, yes, are scared of the virus. We have most of our population, at least 50% now I've been counting, outside wearing masks. A lot of people too masks outside in 30 degree weather, which I think is like 80, 90 degrees in your Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, you know, they're out there in the middle of summer uh, wearing two masks right now. They're scared of the virus. OK, I get it. They've been fooled. Now we have the other part of the population who are scared of the ridicule. They know it's not right, but they don't want to say anything because their best friend or their fucking dad or Uncle Bob is going to say something to call them out, going to humble them, going to make them feel inadequate, whatever it might be. So they're scared. So they're just going along to get along. Right. Yeah, everybody. It's just a mask on from day one. I hope a lot of you realize now it's not just a fucking mask. Right. The science isn't there. We don't need to get into that. But when I've looked into it before, I'm giving it up. I, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm not God. I can tell you I'm a man of one of those. 
and I intuitively feel what's going on right here, but I have been in the health nutritional space for 17 fucking years and know how to read reports and whatnot and looked into it. And it's very clear showing that the mass actually spread the virus even more from touch and laying down. And I've been sitting here picking up these bloody masks off the ground for the last year and a half. And here I am not sick at all because I take care of myself properly. And now we have all this divide happening, right? Back and forth, back and forth, people leading into it. And when the government sees people being oppressed enough where they're ready to take a stand, they, they, they let go of that, you know, they undo it a notch a little bit around yeah. your neck, give you a little more crumbs to have those people. Oh, 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 it's okay. You know, last Saturday, now they can go on patios, have beers. Gyms can open up at 25% capacity. All the gyms that close, that wouldn't stand up for you. These gyms, these alpha males who own them, who are still forcing mask mandates, even for people who have legitimate mask exemptions. And these gym owners I've talked to, and they're against it all, but they don't want to, they don't want to, and they don't realize what I think right now, especially in Canada, people need to realize, because I'm seeing it, I'm a life coach, and even I'll tell you about the boot camp I started for free, bringing people together in the community, the conversations I've heard. We have a lot of people right now, including myself, who are completely tearing away from people. They're realizing, no, this has gone too far. You don't like it. You're going to ridicule me. You're done. You're not in my, you're my mom anymore. You, no, we're done. And, and people are starting from scratch, realizing that. and businesses who are consciously aware of what's going on that are still following the rules a little bit they're scared of the pushback you need to realize yeah you're going to lose some clients but you're going to just say you're going to build for life right now and that's what i've experienced right now so it's uh it, it, the divide happening back and forth man and yeah i started something here in the, just my backyard to try to bring people together right now and it's slowly starting and uh, and we're getting some pushback from the police quite a bit right now too on it yeah, I, I love what you're doing, man. And, and I definitely wanted to go into that. And, you know, because I've seen some of the videos you posted of, you know, the cops looking over the fence and stuff like that. And um, it, it's truly wild. It's it's so first, before we go into that, are there many people like you who who are just saying F it and, and going for it? Because it looks like when you do, when when guys like you and I'm saying specifically in Canada, stand up to this, like you said, they, they give in, you know, but it just takes some people standing up. So are you getting much support from, from other people who are like, I'm with you, I'm doing the same thing. Or, I mean, it seems like you're a pretty fucking rare thing up there. Yeah. In Canada, rare. Luckily, you know, in, in the U S I have a lot of support, like Ian yeah. Smith, like yourself, a lot of the first form family actually really stand behind me, which has been awesome getting the message out but in Canada. Man, in Winnipeg, we got one guy here that I know of, uh, Coach D, Higher Level Fitness. He's doing it. Um, he's got a gym. He said no. Other than that, man, I haven't seen anybody. Now that we're having this, the government handed out that form to everybody saying the segregation, we are having some companies say, hey, we're not behind that. So I've started a highlight reel on my Instagram where I've started promoting those companies as pro-choice. Yeah. If you're pro-choice on everything, you got to meet all three. If you're, you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't want to wear a mask. You don't want to be vaccinated, don't. You want to be vaccinated, fine. You want to social distance, distance. You don't, don't. Those right. three, bring them to me. I got a highlight reel for that. I just started it. I wish it was growing quicker, man. Yeah, I wish we'll, it was growing we'll, quicker. And these are people just privately taking a stand. Yeah. As of your question directly on publicly, no. I Please send them my way. There's yeah. a few, but fuck, rare. Yeah. Absolutely. Very rare. You know, this happened a year and a half ago. I wish. I was like, I wish I had a storefront that I could be a light to show you guys, hey, don't let these fear factors stop you. Don't let it stop you. Where I am, specifically in Winnipeg, about almost a million people, we have 1,500 officers here. Now, I back the blue, but at this point, if you back this tyrannical rule, you really need to reevaluate your decisions in life and your values and your morals, all right? Yeah. And, and that's at a that tough... point, when I look at 1,500 officers, how many businesses and people standing up would it take for them to be like, oh, you know, what are we going to do? Right. The, 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 the people we're for the people we don't work like right they, they have a backwards everybody has a backwards so it's uh so yeah to answer your question directly not many man i wish there was more and that's why i'm being as loud as i can i'm asking everybody please share what i'm doing it's not for me it's not for my brand this has saved this fucking country and saved this world it's not just what's happening in canada this is just a great place for it to be presidents and move forward from there right we have a lot of stuff going on in your country everybody's like australia is not in a good situation right now either yeah. so it's uh yeah i wish that's why i'm i'm having my voice try to hear as loud as i can and show you you know you can find me 10 million dollars put me in jail i don't give two shits these scare tactics will not work 
I will give up everything for my children and their future generations for your children. And we need more people like that. We're seeing a lot of women, a lot of women stand up. Yeah, step up, man. man. Fucking men. When I look at it, we got two types of men there that are watching this. The types that have been, weren't scared to get punched in the face when they were growing up. And that presence is known. You can feel that. You know those men. And they feel fucking proud. They're protectors and providers. We need you to stand up. Some of you are. Some of you are doing it too private. You need to do it more publicly. And then we have, secondly, those who are scared to get punched in the face growing up and hid from it. And I know you have regretted that your whole fucking life. And this is your chance to grab a hold of your manhood and step it up right now and show people that you can be a protector and provider. We need that right now. We need everybody. We need you, you people uniting right now. Amen. Absolutely, man. And that's, that's why I'm fucking doing this. You know, this podcast started throughout all of this stuff. And it was really just because I wanted to give voices to people and to talk about these topics because, you know, I kind of experienced – cancel culture, whatever you want to call it, just, just by talking about the fact that based on my scientific background, like here's why masks are ineffective, especially in a gym. And I started talking about that dude and people just went crazy on me. And, and that's when I knew like, this is something different. Like this is a different thing. It's a weird group think mentality. It's, it's not, you know, and so many people are afraid to speak up against that. Because I think the reasons you pointed out, but also because they're beholden to to jobs and things like that, where somehow this has penetrated even industry and corporations. And, and now so people are genuinely scared. I mean, I, I wanted to ask you this, but um, I get tons of messages from people all the time who are like, man, I'm so fucking thankful for what you're doing, what you're talking about. Because I wish I could, but I, w- I know I would lose my job. Do you get yeah. a lot of messages like that from people who are like uh, like that? Mostly, yeah. Yeah. 100%. One of the biggest ones, 100%. That's one of the number ones. Yeah, people who are scared. And that, that follows around when I was saying ridicule and judgment. But we yeah. have practitioners, teachers, doctors who have actually had notice from the government. If you go against this narrative, you'll lose your license. Damn. And then we have all the other individuals who will lose their work. And now... Right in front of everybody, our government has announced there is up to fifty thousand dollar incentives for employers to hire vaccinated people. I'll, rep- I'll repeat that: the government has given employers fifty thousand dollar incentives to hire vaccinated employees. People seem to be okay with this, let alone the briberies on us. So what we're seeing, you know, you have and that's why a year and a half I have all these. Freedom fighters tell me, yeah, I'm so against this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, are you? Do you live life backwards? How far have you thought? How far are you willing to fight on this? What happens when they take your right to travel away, which we've seen, and we're seeing people jump over? What happens when you can't go to restaurants anymore? What happens when you can't go to concerts anymore? What happens when you can't go to sporting events? What happens when you lose your job? You lose your family, your parents. They don't like you anymore. What happens when there's million-dollar lotteries on the table for you to jump ship? We're seeing all this. I said this a year and a half ago. And a lot of people are like, mm, yeah, didn't really think that far. And we're seeing all that. All the people jump ships. So now people like myself, the minority, growing smaller and smaller and smaller. What happens when that group is so small and the government says, hey, guys, you did so amazing. You all went there. The only problem left is these people. These people who say they're fighting for freedom, but they really want you dead. They want your grandma's dead, blah, 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 blah. What's going to happen then with that kind of power, right? So, yeah. I have so many people coming to me to ask a question that are fearful of their jobs and whatnot. And that's why I've actually dived into some things that I can help people make on online money. There are a few network marketing companies that I think, hey, you got to jump into this or that, whatever you can. If you can get behind some supplements, if you get behind something you stand behind and start generating some other income, especially in a U.S.-based company away from Canada. Pretty right. important right now, I see. So even just the farmer's market here, right across the door, if you watch my videos, you probably hear me talk how these cops are coming Originally, we weren't allowed to gather with more than one person from outside of our household for a while. More than one person. That's when I finally said, no, fine. I'm starting a boot camp in my backyard free of charge. Four times a week. Let's get as many people here as we can. Cherry on top. I'm actually promoting health. That's cherry on top. What we're doing here is publicly taking a stand, saying, F you. We're not taking this. And then thirdly, building a community of people to show, hey, yeah, there's those that are going to ridicule you. But look how many people are growing here that support you and that will stand with you and that you can make significant relationships with our actually meaningful 
for your best interest. So that's what I'm doing here. And we got this farmer's market, Hollywood more than one, one person. We got almost a thousand people there buying baked goods, liquor, candy. I'm sure there's plants and stuff there too, but it's all like, you know, it's a lot of garbage. Yeah. And then we're allowed to gather with five people and then allowed to gather with 10 people. I just put a video actually on all three police visits for each one of those. The farmer's market right there, they don't care. You have a thousand people. And when I go there, all the vendors, not all, I have about half the vendors that come up to me now, secretly shake my hand, say, thank you for what you're doing. Wow. Thank you. I wish that I could, but my children's livelihood run off of this little lemonade shop I have here, whatever it is, right? We have so many people who are just at that divide. And luckily I put myself in a position. I think God has put me, I don't think I know God has put me in a position to be able to stand up to this and be somebody who's taken those beatings in my past. And I'm willing to sacrifice and I'm willing to do so for our people. So hopefully there's more that unite as they hear my voice and see my stand. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank God for people like you and, you know, down here, like Ian Smith and, you know, all the, all the people who are willing to just say, you know what, I don't care what the consequence is. The, I, I hold these, these values to be far more important than what you could ever do to me and what they represent. And, you know, I think for me, and, and I know you, you're a dad as well. For me, I just, I just keep thinking about the country and the world that my child has to grow up in. And that drives me. Um, because it's just, it's terrifying that you can have a scenario where someone is afraid to exercise their freedom of speech, which, you know, down here is constitutionally protected because they're going to lose their livelihood just, just because they talked about an opinion. And I know that, you know, Jordan Peterson up there in Canada rose to prominence from, you know, speaking out against legislation or legislatively compelling speech. And it sounds like the C10 and what was the other one? The C10 36, right on Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like they're trying to do it again up there. Why, yeah. why do they want to control your speech so much in Canada, man? Good question, right? Yeah. That's a good question. It's a good question. It's scary. So I don't with, know what you're thinking this, about right now. Yeah. I mean, I think people should think about that. Like, why do they want to control our speech so much up here? Because I think a lot of a lot of times people don't realize, you know, because I'm very vocal about my pride in the USA. I'm very proud to be from my country, you know, and and I get a lot of pushback for that these days, which is wild, right? Like people think that if you have an American flag, you're like a f white supremacist or something. And it's like, no, I'm proud to be from this country. I think it's okay for someone to be proud of their country. But um, uh, we, we often take for granted in this country that not all other nations have constitutionally protected free speech. Like it, it's not written into legislation everywhere. And I think in Canada, that's the case, right? I mean, they can put you in jail for words, basically. Yeah, it's a, it's a great line right now. Our constitution is pretty well able to be trampled right over uh, as long as we're in a state of emergency. And uh, I want to make note on what wow. you said there. That's something I've always, always commended and respected Americans for. Um, you know, most of my followers in the States, most of my friends are, yeah. and you are individuals who stand for something, who are judged for it often. And that's what we need to look at as an example, because you speak up for your country and what you believe in unapologetically and people don't appreciate that because they don't have a backbone to do it themselves. Yep. And is there flaws? There's flaws everywhere. hundred percent. Right. But you guys are patriot. I've always respect you for that. And you say what's on your fucking mind. That's the big difference. People are like, Oh, I'm nauseous. Nah, you're all thinking it. You just don't have the spine to say it. Right. So that I give you huge, huge props on my biggest respect. And, and that is, you know, our constitution is a pretty well joke. It seems right now. And I wish I'm just, I got to hope, man, that we're going to see the country unite and, and, and make a change to that. Um, and uh, I fear it's going to take a, a point of, of you guys really having to help, honestly. Uh, we'll see how far this goes, but obviously we share a border, and I think things are going to get a lot darker before they get lighter here. Yeah, well, unfortunately, you know, we, we've had some changes in office here, and, and, you know, we're a little less more inclined to support those ideals now, unfortunately, with the current administration. Mm -hmm. but still, what we represent as a people, you know, I think I, I have tons of pride in. And, and yeah, well, if I can ever help in any way, let me know. I know I'm just one person, but, yeah, um, no. you know, I appreciate it. yeah, man. And it's um, it's one of those it's one of those things where you just you think that 
society has come a certain distance and we're sort of beyond things like this and until you see the footage of you having the cops come because you're having a damn, you know, boot camp in your backyard or seeing churches getting, you know, broken up by SWAT teams and all this stuff. And, you know, I, ab- they say absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? And I, I feel like just as an outsider looking in it, what you guys have going on, I, I keep going back to this Justin Trudeau guy and like, what is, I mean, is he just like bought and paid for by some greater force or is he just like a, this guy dead set on controlling his people or what, what is going on with this guy? And also how much longer does he have to be in office? Uh, well, that's funny because they just, uh, I believe passed it. So as long as we're in a state of emergency, elections will be pushed off. So, Oh, no shit. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty interesting that people just seem to be all right with that as well. Um, that's a good question. I was talking about last night, you know, is this guy, I was asking a friend, a new friend, one of those significant relationships I told you about that I'm making right now that will be lifelong. Is there a chance that this man truly feels this is what's best for his people? Yeah. I'm really, I'm always reflecting, right? I'm always like, it is what I'm doing right. Is there, is there anything I'm missing? That's what I was trying to ask. Like, do you really part what every way that I can, right? And we don't see it, you know? So is it, I think he must be a puppet. Absolutely. There's no chance in hell this guy isn't a puppet. If you ever look at him, he just, you know, and I hate to say judging by the cover, but what you see, how he presents himself, the energy, everything, you know, <laughs> we had this big craze of getting this guy in office before because he was fucking good looking. All the Canadian ladies were just crazy about it. How you doing now with what happened? <laughs> like, uh, man, and we're going back to like th- these, you know, these things he put in place in lockdowns. And we look at last year, you know, all that t- stuff I was talking about, about the divides. You know, we had the liquor stores and pot stores open, candy stores, but all these other stores closed. Church services weren't allowed to happen. Um, the church is closed, right? So now that means all the AA meetings and everything closed down as well, right? All these resources. And we had a few a few pastors that said, no, 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 no. The, the law of the Lord is above law of man. Right. And don't forget what these, whether you are a man of God, a woman of God or not, do not forget what our constitutions were written on, what these countries were formed upon. Okay. I know we've had it removed from school, but that was probably a big mistake. And I got to tell you, and I'm talking about this as history from a man who's very recently a man of God as well. Um, so I know both sides. Of that. I've only been a man of God for the last year. Um, so when we had these pastors step up and say, no, 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 we're at least going to, you know, we'll follow some of the rules. We'll do outdoor church service where everybody's social distancing cars. We'll put up a big movie theater outdoors, right? Guess what they did? They came in, shut them down, gave them tickets for that. Pastor said, "Uh, uh-uh, I don't think so, boys. Did it again. Did it again. They ended up putting them in jail. This is one of three pastors. This is one right here where I am for Springs Church. He put up with it and kept going. And guess what happened after that? The government yeah. said, okay, outdoor church services allowed. I don't know why people didn't seem to understand what, what that process happened, what, what those steps were how things work. Apparently not many people dealt with bullies when they were a kid. Right. I did. And you can see what's happening right now. So we have a few individuals who have pushed back a lot more people in the Christian community, it seems. Um, And again, a lot, a lot of women as well. So a true go, man, it's, it's tough. There's so much, that's a, that's a fucking 10 hour conversation right there, bro. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, again, my perspective is just as this guy on the outside looking in and trying to figure it all out. But um, are there are there parts of Canada, to your knowledge, that are not as bad or is it pretty much like this everywhere up there? So so there's some parts that have opened up a little more, some parts they're letting go Um, right where I am middle. They've locked down the hardest. It used to be Ontario. Now we have. Pallister, can't remember what his first name is, our premier. He uh, he's actually just publicly stated over a week ago that um, um, that getting up to seventy, loosening up restrictions at seventy percent vaccination rates is a myth. We need to be at ninety to ninety five percent, ninety ninety five percent. And this is also a guy who just said that three days ago that he get this. I have a video of him saying this. He has made an eleventh commandment: follow the World Health Organization public health orders. <laughs> this guy, yeah, he's made an eleventh commandment, and people seem to be all right with this. 
Well, it's insane. And another crazy thing about these vaccine requirements is that you know the vaccine isn't. Let's say that you do for a second buy into the fact that something needs to be done. Okay, like I'm of the mind that I'm just going to take care of my immune system. You know, work out, and I'm in a very low risk demographic. I'm fine. But let's say you do want to take some sort of medical precaution, right? Like the vaccine's not the only answer. I mean, we we know that there are drugs like ivermectin that are incredibly effective. Now they're being silenced on these issues because the patents have expired and big pharma stands to make no money. But, you know, it's interesting to me that these governments are instituting requirements that it has to be the vaccine when it could be, I mean, it's really a composite, right? It could be that you've already had COVID and so now you have natural immunity. You're taking something like ivermectin, so you're protected. A a lot of evidence to show more than a vaccine and the vaccines. So it should at least be if they're going to require some kind of proof, which I don't support at all, but it should at least be something like, show me one of the three. Like, have you had COVID before? Okay, you've got natural immunity. You're not a risk. Are you taking ivermectin? Okay, cool. Have you gotten one of the vaccines? Okay, cool. But it's not. And and that makes you think that there's something more to it. Like it's driven by money, power, you know, and, and so down here in the States, for example, this is a topic I've researched a lot because it just seems so fishy, man. Like this whole ivermectin thing, it was heavily silenced early on. And I mean, we, you know, Fauci's emails came out and stuff. And so it's like, we know that he was aware of it. Right. And when you dig into it, the, it, there's a strong case that it was being silenced because of greed, because in order to get these EUAs, emergency use authorizations to make the vaccines, it had to be proven that there's no other effective treatment for the drug or for the disease. And so that's why they silenced it. And I mean, ivermectin literally is like a dollar for a dose, right? And nobody holds a patent, so nobody's going to make any money. And that just makes you so fucking angry because it's like they've been covering this up simply out of greed when it could have prevented thousands and thousands and thousands of deaths. And now they're still going to say you're required to be vaccinated. No other solution to this issue, even though, you know, the cat's out of the bag now. Like we know ivermectin exists and we know it's like 90 some percent effective. But still, these governments like yours especially is is trying to institute vaccine requirements specifically. And it's just it's so obvious if you just take the time to actually read and study this stuff and and – I don't know where I'm going with that, man, but it's like, it's so, it's, it makes you so mad, you know, like. You you nailed it on the head, man. You nailed it on the head with that. It's It's been silenced. Um, Our, our premier has said that's misinformation. That's same with any, any benefits from vitamin D misinformation. Vitamin D? All the dollar amount. When you look at, when we look at the amount spent through our economy with the lockdowns, the adverse effects of it from depressions, I got to tell you, I know 10 times more people who have committed suicide or overdose in the last year and a half than I have who died from COVID. I should probably a lot more than 10 times. Absolutely. All, right? all of the soon to be law cases, the expenses of all this, the expenses from the advertisement for social distancing, the expenses for the vaccines, the expenses that they put out for all of this. What if we took all that money and made permanent pop up? COVID restrict COVID sites because it's all about we don't have enough ICU beds with the ventilators. So what if we took all that money and made pop up like it's all bullshit. There's no advertising to promote health. There's nothing. So that yeah. right there, you nailed it on the head. And people just look at that specifically, even if it was a viable way. Why are we not hearing about anything else? Why is it all just about get the juice? Get the juice. Here's the lottery if you get the juice. Here's yeah. a good job if you get the juice. Here's good seating at a restaurant if you get the juice. You're not doing your country a favor if you don't get the juice. Yeah. Meanwhile, these companies face no legal ramifications for adverse effects. Right. They're making and billions in profit. Blocks. And that's just what we're seeing, what's getting leaked out in, in, in news. Thankfully, you in the States have a lot of a lot more news outlets that are giving coverage now. And I think that's more so you have a few governors who finally said, no, oh, we're yeah. standing up against it. It's like, oh, fuck, we better start getting a line that people are waking up. Here we have very small, like rebel news, very tiny little news outlets that are trying to pop up to share their voice and what's actually being brought to light. But we're, 
there's not hardly any coverage. And that's, again, bring it back to those Bill C-10 and C-36. You know, I, I just shared an interesting video from an attendee at boot camp on that. On You know, we look at that protest in England that just happened. You know, how many people on the streets against the lockdowns, everything happening. It can hit a degree where we won't even see that here. Right. We won't even know what's going on really in the world. People standing up for it. We'll be in a fucking entire bubble here. And that's like, that's like communist China stuff, man. That's crazy. Precisely. That's crazy, right? People two years ago would look at things in China that, wow, that's how, that's what their country's like. Oh my goodness. Wow. And then, and they're sitting here taking their fucking jabs for joints and donuts and stuff. And, and, and just, oh, 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 this is okay. Like, <laughs> You know, I'm doing great. I, loving thy neighbor as myself. And in doing so, they deserve a slap right now. A, yeah. a, a wake right the fuck up and stand up right now before it's too late because we're already almost there. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like there, there's not even any satisfaction in saying I told you so at this point because of how Zero. severe the ramifications are. You know, it's just like I don't even want that that pleasure of saying, I told you so, I just want you to change. Like, I just want you to realize what is going on here because it's getting, it's, it's insane. I mean, you hear people. So I, I hear people that I know from my background in, in science who were open-minded, intelligent people, just mindlessly saying, you know, trust the government. They have your best interest in mind. Do what they tell you. Why would you ever question anything? And it's like, what is what is what is going on here, man? It's insane, and it's it. Yeah. Do you do you think that more people in Canada, even though they're being quiet because they're afraid to speak up, do you think that everything that has transpired is at least creating some um, some awareness and some some doubt in people as far as their trust in the government up there? It seems like it might do that, even though they're not willing to speak up about it. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I think since they rolled out the segregation uh, from in, uh, from the vaccines, um, now that has been clearly stated, we are having some people who have got the juice who feel it's a good idea that are not for this. So, like, yeah. that's not right. Um, so, thankfully, that has woken some people up. But again, it's a lot of people who've just been, you know, two years of nearly two years of your life taken away is a lot. A lot yeah. of people don't give a fuck anymore. They are just selfish right now. They're like, no, no, I've been through way too much. I was already going through way too much before this happened. And now we have this. I need my life back. I need to open up my business. I need to travel. I need to do this and that. Go get that fucking shot. Do it. Go get that shot, right? But we are having a lot of people wake up, thankfully. Like, thank goodness there are a lot of individuals that are standing up like, no, this is not right. But we're fast tracking to a point where that that presence online and sharing and making in more impact is going to be silenced lawfully right away. Right. That is what the, the draw, the direction on this is. That's what we're seeing presented right in front of our faces. People need to like, stand up now with no time. Yeah. You need to go and do a, a day at the lake once in a while to, release some of that bad energy, absolutely go and do so. But for the most part, you need to be uniting with people right now who are like-minded, consciously aware of what's going on. Yeah. And what's going to happen is with this legislation, they can say that what you're, what you're saying is hate speech and, and they can Precisely. shut you down. That's the scary thing is like when you have something so subjective as hate speech being legislated in, it's like who gets to decide what that is? Right. Who's the arbiter of truth here? That that's why we never make any modifications to our First Amendment in this country is like free speech is free speech, man. You might not like what somebody says and it could be hate speech, but hate speech is still free speech, you know. And, exactly. And it, exactly. I'll, and when they're looking at the direction online, I'm sorry, but you got an easy option on Instagram to block that individual now. And guess what? And even when you block them, it says block any other accounts they make. Yeah. Somebody said they don't like I'm sorry if you're too sensitive to at least see it and block that person out and ignore it. That's a fucking you problem. They need to really toughen the fuck up. Yep. I agree, man. And it's just, it's a slippery slope. As soon as you go down that, it, there's just no, there's no point of return. I mean, it's just the next guy that comes into office might decide that this is hate speech. And, and then, you know, Oh, so we're going to take a little bit more. And now you can't talk about this or that. And it's like, and not only can you not talk about it, you can't even like, 
have it on your social media. Like that's insane. That is truly like dictatorial governance. That's an insane. I can't believe you guys are dealing with that, man. There's yeah. no, there's no, oh, oh, no, kind of no. That's hundred percent. There's the line. Like I said, I said last wow. night, the, the, <laughs> the machete has been cut down on the table right now. You're either for it or you're not. Anything yeah. you follow at this point, when you're consciously aware, you're, you're for it all. And and uh, and I get it. I speak very boldly, and I want to I want to share that message to remind people. Hey, yeah, I tell you, it's black or white. But don't don't think I don't understand the divide that people are being put into right now, being torn apart. I have clients whose marriages are being pulled apart, right? I have Damn. a few clients who were both against everything going on, right? My, uh, wife and husband, husband's in the military, ended up having to get the juice if you wanted to still serve his country, thought it was the best thing, even though he's against it, has it in him now. And then guess what? When these individuals have it in them and they see all this divide, all this speak against it, they feel it's necessary to have to defend it now right. because it's in their fucking body. And now we have that divide up. So don't be mistaken for my bold speaking and my saying you're either for it or not. I get it. I get that your mind has been <sighs> softened up from all the creature comforts we have in life. I get that your family hates you now if you're going to have that opinion. We are at that point, though. You've yeah. got to go through it. Trust me, I've gone through it. I have. A lot of my family, most of my family does not believe uh, the same as I do. We're completely torn apart. Yeah, I actually... Uh, I rest of my life because of this that's how it is at this point i'm sorry to say it yeah yeah no i yeah and i wanted to ask you because i actually i had this conversation with ian smith when i had him on the podcast as well and i'm always curious you know guys like you guys guys like myself and you know i know kind of where it comes from for me uh, but you mentioned your family and how most of them actually don't you know feel the same way you do where did this um because you clearly have this this characteristic of standing up for what you believe in standing up against authority where did that come from i mean was that instilled in you as a kid or is that mm. something that has evolved as you've grown as a man yeah you know what that's uh that's a good question dave um my uh my mom was definitely one hell of a she is one hell of a hard worker um was one badass babe that's for sure a kind of no fucking around club, which I like to be consider myself a part of, and I think both you and myself are. Hundred percent. That that definitely set the president. My uh, my dad was involved as a as a kid until he met his new wife, and then he decided to move provinces where I am now, leave his children. So that was a huge impact for me. Um, um, you know, I saw another story, but that actually is what led to me being an overly involved father, which has created these memes that have gone viral that have impacted millions of people. So I always look at every. You know, every adversity we face in life has a, a seed of equivalent or greater success. As long yeah. as you plant that seed, water it, take care of it. And unfortunately, the circle of life, the flower that's produced from that seed may or may not be for you. Right. And that's the way I look at that situation in my life. When he left, I became an overly involved father. We have these memes that most of your listeners have seen guaranteed if you see it go across your, uh, your screen. And it's impacted millions in a positive way. Right. But when we draw back from my old man leaving, I, I went down a life of crime. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've, I, I'm writing a book about it. It's quite extensive. It could definitely be a pretty kick-ass action movie, that's for sure. And I'm not just posting for my own ego on that. Um, and I don't regret any of it because I made a lot of a lot of big mistakes that a lot of people shouldn't make. Um, but God put me on that path for a reason because now I'm able to not only relate with people as a life coach, but as well I have the resolve, character, grit, fortitude, everything I need. Thanks to 75 Heart too. I got to add that plug in there for that. But yeah. all of that brought together as an individual who can take this kind of beating right now. And um, so I would say that's just going through the ringer on myself, mostly um, president set by my mom. And honestly, the the hate that was left behind of my old man leaving uh, his children to go and uh, live with and start a family with his wife, considering he was an involved father, right? He wasn't just a, a, a shit dad that was never around. He did seem like a pretty caring dad, just kind of his kid's they weren't really connected with him that much because he kind of went a different way and they like, oh, well, fuck, I'm going to move over here. Do you guys want to come? No. Okay. I'm leaving. Um, so I think it was a mix of that. And then just going through the ringer, you know, I've been in the system. I've uh, done a little bit of time here and there and changed my life around, started a construction company. When I was 18 years old, ran that for 10 years, became the best in the province, uh, won a bunch of awards. And then um, I transitioned over to life coaching as I just got a calling to that, realizing that my voice and my presence and my boldness was needed. 
for individuals to consciously wake up, you know, let go of past trauma, dive into the subconscious and help them really see life for what it is and be grateful for having breath and having not only the memories from yesterday, but all the hard lessons, right? I wake up every day and it's the best damn day of my life. If you ask me how my day is, I'll tell you it's the best fucking day of my life. And people Absolutely. get sick of hearing that. Some people love it, but they're like, hey, better than the day your daughter was born. Better. Absolutely. I have that memory and I have all the hard lessons learned from yesterday. And here I am alive, breathing with all of that in my tool belt to take advantage and become my best and take this day to the fullest and help others do the same, right? So that's where I'm at right now. And, and a lot of things have lined up to, to becoming the man you see on that standpoint right now. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, wrong turns, but in truth, they were the right turns because there's a reason I'm here today. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and I couldn't agree more. I mean, the, the adversity I've faced made me who I am and I have, I, would do it all over again. And it's, and I value that and I'm, I'm glad it happened. And, and I think like you said, you, it, it becomes what you do with it and what you, what you choose to turn it into. And, and um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate you sharing that with me and I'm glad that you, you did sort of find, find the path that you should be on because I think you are, you know, where you need to be. I certainly um, really enjoy your content and your messaging and, and what you're doing. And, you know, I think your country needs you, man. I think especially, given where you're located and, and what you guys have going on. You know, I think in general, you know, there's a lot more guys like you down here in the States for sure. Um, but it's needed up there. You know, I, I think that, I think that uh, one day you're going to look back and reflect on how grateful you are that you did stand up to, to what's going That's on. That's exactly it. You know, when, when everything comes to the end of it, if I end up spending 20 years, my rest of my life in jail, I'll be like, you know what? At least I stood for something. And I didn't just bow down and let it happen. Yeah. Because as you said right there, it's not it's not the adversity, obstacle, object we face. It's our mindset and response to it that counts, man. And a lot yeah. of people need to realize that. I'm always focusing on living by the 90-10 rule, right? Take 10% of our time and energy, put it on the problems. I mean, do you identify the problem? What is it? Find the details out about it. Okay, now 90% of your time and energy needs to be on solutions. How do we fix that problem? How do we move forward and become the person, individual that we want to become and build the world we want to build? A lot of people have that backwards. Yeah. They maybe identify a solution and they dwell on the problem, dwell on the problem. Look at all the social media problems. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Tell the universe they want more fucking problems. Focus on that at all, right? Need to flip that switch around. Get the information you need and execute day by day by day. Make a plan, put your head down one day at a time, win the day, put it back up in three months and reflect and move forward from there. And that's what I'm trying to help people do between the community I'm growing here with the free boot camp, taking that public stand, and moving forward from there. You know, yeah. I think right now we're starting to take account of all the positions that everybody has and and, uh, and how we're going to combine to probably join a colony. So start a colony someday. I think it's coming to that point. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I think that, no matter how difficult it gets, you can always have solace in the fact that you're on the right side of things, you know? Precisely. That, yeah. Um, I know you've got a hard stop. I know you got, you got another um, thing to jump on. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to get into, you know, kind of for the last part here, just a little bit of your, your mindset on masculinity, um, what it means to be a man today, where, what is the state of masculinity? You know, I obviously, I have a lot of opinions on this that I've talked about and, you know, had guests on to talk about. And, and, um, you know, I think in general, like you've even mentioned it, more women are standing up in Canada than men are, you know, what, where has that come from? You know, what can we do? What should we be doing, uh, from here? And then, you know, what do you see as, as the future for what it means to be a man in this really in this world, you know, not even in, in Canada or the States, but in general, you know, yeah, honestly, I'm happy asking that because that's a big subject of mine. That's one of, you know, the top three things I, I promote on my social media is yeah. masculinity, being a man's man. You know, I'm all about health and fitness mindset, you know, mind, body, spirit, being a devoted father, helping people. Like I do date night videos. Me and my daughter do a date night every two weeks. We make a point it, to record yeah. them sometimes specifically to promote other people to stand up. That takes a lot of extra work and she enjoys it as well. Then thirdly, being a man's man and promoting that. And I think, well, I don't think we can see the attack, toxic masculinity. We've had the last five years trending huge, right? All these different attacks on men for being toxic masculinity. When in general, no, if that's real, 
if you see someone who's like, that's just a toxic motherfucker right now. Right. He's just, just a, a toxic, toxic person. Right. Yeah. Like that is bullshit. We need, and one of the problems is a lot of individuals. So you ask me to find a man in, in, in short, you know, a protector and provider, someone who's willing to lead by example and stand out front, willing to take shots, be a bold individual, regardless of the crowd that can get out and lead by example and also reflect on themselves and admit when they were wrong, when they need to correct themselves. And what the problem is, a big problem, these manly men, we have an ego. And it is necessary, but it is also necessary to keep it in control. But most manly men, too, enjoy the comedy. And you have these individuals who are oversensitive and see that and just see the ego and attack it and make these men need to feel emasculated and shut themselves down and never even reach that point of full prime in themselves where they can stand and come into themselves and make that presence felt and lead our people where we need to go. We are being led by the weak minded right now. I'm sorry to say you're I'm pro choice all for it, but there's a lot of bullshit out there where individuals are making new legislation, new ways of leading our people because they're too fucking weak in the mind and can't handle people judging them and standing true to who the fuck they are. We need people willing to lead by example, be protectors and providers and get out front and do what needs to be done. We need the people to do the fucking dirty work. Men need to do dirty work. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And you know, the last few episodes that I've had, man, I, I um, asked, basically I asked the question, why has there been an attack on masculinity? And the last couple guests I had actually all gave the same answer. It was really interesting. And that answer was because if you want to control a society, you have to take out the strong people first. Is that Barbs. what your general sentiment is as well? Is that what you think is going on? Yeah, this is, you can see all of this. This is not just, oh, pandemic happened. Let's not, no, this has all been played out. This is exactly what has been happening. Attack the man first. Let's promote. And then you look at Trudeau, he's been promoting, like, look at all the legislations he's passed as recently. Look at the people he's he's speaking to, right? Just yeah. take a look at that. I won't, even, I won't even make specific details. You can dive into it and see it for yourself. It's been an attack on the men. It's been an attack on the protectors and providers and the people who will lead and stand out front. It's also, you know, take their guns away, take this and that away, right? Where this, it, you're seeing it trying to be done on Americans as well, all over the fucking world. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really it has been take it, attack masculinity, take our guns away, and then defund the police, right? So it's like this trifecta of if you truly accomplish those things, you're left with with a society that's just weak at, and crippled with no ability to protect itself, no ability to enforce, you know, standards of, of, um, of, uh, just standards of standing up for what you believe in. Right. And it's scary because whether or not that's on purpose, I mean, it's happening. Right. And, and there's things we can do to prevent it from happening. And I think that, you know, personally, my thought is that it starts at home, right? Like you all, you all have agency over your own home. You all have agency over your own family. And despite what they're, what they're trying to indoctrinate your kids with uh, out in, in public institutions, you control the narrative at home, and that's where it should start. Do you have anything to add to that, or is that how you feel we should pursue uh, this as well? 100%. 100%. That's why, you know, from day one, um, I've been promoting men to step it up as dads. Presence over yeah, presence, gifts. Right. And being somebody who has life lessons to give and getting through to your children and having that narrative, as you said, as being an individual who truly leads from their heart and intuition, their spirit and being a protector for all, no matter what the crowd, regardless of the crowd. Right. Yeah. Not just going along to get along, you know, in your heart, what's right. And that's what I don't understand with these officers right now. I, any of you listening, as I know, you know, I had, I, I don't think I mentioned maybe just briefly last night I was on. So I started this boot camp, right? Where I'm doing four times a week for free in my backyard for free, no strings attached. This is me just wanting you to be in an atmosphere where there is zero restrictions. You can fully live free and publicly do so to show people that there are individuals to connect with. We've also decided to add a ride to freedom, a bicycle ride every Sunday night. We go for a bike ride Hell yeah. that was illegal to do with more than one person just a few weeks ago, illegal to do with more than five people just a week ago. Now it was 10. Oh, now we can do 25 publicly only 10 in my backyard. So I make sure that we have more than that because you don't fucking tell me I can only have a thousand people. I will meet up as many fucking people as I want. I'm a free fucking man. Amen. So we do this ride for freedom last night. 
Now these individuals gather together, right? Then guess what happens after one of the individuals I really wanted to connect with significant relationships I'm talking about. He has a, he bikes here to my house. He had a 13 kilometer, but whatever, eight mile bike ride back home. So you know, what? I'm going to bike with you. We can converse and I'll bike back on my own. We're biking. Two police officers drive beside us. We're having a casual conversation on our bikes, going at a relaxed speed. They stalk us for about a block, just stare me down, giving me a dog eye saying this means war. And honestly, I wish to say I was fucking surprised. I wasn't. I was absolutely disgusted to see that their egos were hurting more because I'm putting them on blast for something that they shouldn't be doing compared to their hearts hurting for what they're seeing being done to their people. It's so an absolute you- fucking disgrace. So I know a lot of them are watching right now, and I hope there are some officers in this city that have some fucking heart and know that this is wrong and reach out to me. It'd be great to fucking see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you think those those guys knew who you were? That's why they were oh, doing 100%. that? They, yeah. they, 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 hundred percent. No, that was not a hundred percent. Looked at me, dog yeah. eye, like he lit like straight, we eye contact for like a block. I, and this is a busy street they're driving on. We went up on the sidewalk. We were sitting there, me and my buddy, like. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, weird scenario. No, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, it's it's odd because it's like what you said earlier. It's like I back the blue. You know, I support what 100%. these men and women do 100%. every day. I'll you off there. I just want to let you know, I back the blue 100%. Yeah. But then, you know, there's this weird scenario now where, where you have these individuals I have the utmost respect for who are enforcing these, they're not laws, you know, they're re- rules or regulations or whatever. And, you know, it's like, you know, that they don't believe in them, you know, at least a percentage of them don't, yet they're still complicit in enforcing them. And so it's, I find myself in this weird position where I'm like, I have respect for you and what you do, but I don't respect what you're representing right now. So how do I navigate those waters? And you guys heard Sean, you know, if you're, if you're in his area and you are a police officer, reach out and have a conversation. Um, I think that's the best way is just not to forget that we are just people and we can talk and we can work shit out that way. Right. Yeah, all I'm standing for is for individuals to be free, to have choice. If you're scared of a virus, you want to go stay home, stay home. You're trying to give these mandates for people controlling. I just took my daughter to the zoo yesterday. I have people trying to yell at us to put a mask on. We won't fucking put a mask on. I'm sitting there. You're you're, you're worried? We're in a pandemic and there's a zoo open? Give me a fucking break. <laughs> you're worried about this? You're at the zoo? You're, you're in line at the liquor store and you're worried? Yeah, it's all about power. It's all about exercising power over another. They're not truly scared, you know. Um, last thing I want to ask, because I know you got to get going, and I ask every guest this, um, what advice do you have today to young men, say age 18 to 22, maybe something you wish you had known at that age, or in general, just one piece of advice you would give young men especially today? Oh, man, honestly, for young men, I'm going to totally give a plug to one of my biggest mentors, Annie Priscilla, hundred percent. Go do 75 hard and listen to all 300 episodes of the MFCO project. When you do it. Absolutely. That would, we had every single man on, on the world do that. And then also if we could get every single person on this world, three grams of magical mushrooms to take at the same time, I think this would all be over. Yeah. <laughs> I, where did they, they, I think he, uh, I think they talked about that on Rogan, right? He was like, if everybody could just take mushrooms, at the same time. Oh, I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah, I have, yeah. I haven't asked to catch up on all my favorite podcasts lately. It's been a little crazy recently. So even my businesses are falling behind at the moment. Yeah, yeah, man. But I, I second that. I second both of those points. But I mean, I'm obviously a huge Andy Frisella fan. I work for First Form. You know, he's been a, a mentor both directly and indirectly to me for years, you know, in, in everything I do in life. And yeah, do 75 hard if you haven't, guys. Huge fucking game changer for your mental toughness and, and just... Yeah, I agree 100%. All right, brother, I know you've got to get out of here. I know you got a lot going on. I appreciate you giving me so much of your time today. Where can people go to support you and your cause? And where can people just find you in general online? Yeah, I appreciate you, man, and having me on. Um, Absolutely. By all means, guys, uh, I want to share that message again. Everybody, Canadian specifically right now, and I will say my inbox has been flooded, obviously, with taking a more public stance lately, so it does take me some time to get through it. I'm about a week behind on that right now, um, but please, Canadian specifically, I have many connections. I have many resources. I have a lot of strengths. Use me. Use me. I am your tool. 
Yeah. You can find me. My social media account probably won't be active that much longer, I'm sure. Uh, my website is thevikingondemand.com. That's the Viking on. You can get into my social media, everything off of there. Podcast is coming soon. It's been asked for the last two years. I'll be launching that pretty soon, which I have a feeling that's where all my content will go because I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, actually I'm positive now with the new legislation <laughs> popping off that my soul, even if Instagram doesn't believe me, I will be muted from my government. So um, you can find me at thevikingondemand.com and I am somebody who gives his time as much as he can. I'm a tool. You need to use me right now. So take advantage of it and put me to use 100%. Thanks again, Dave. I appreciate it, bro. You got it, brother.